tell you about this interaction. It works like this. I, I did already say last time, I gave an example of a problem and to show you what an interaction was, and I'll do it again. If an electron wants to go, let's suppose we have a problem where an electron starts here, it's an electron. Now I'm going to use colors. Good. Photons will be blue, electrons will be black because of that. So hereafter, all the electrons that are moving around in this game are black and the photons are blue. And the typical idea is that an electron can go from one place to another and then go from that place to another and so forth. That at a particular place, a photon always is emitted by an electron or absorbed by some other electron or maybe goes on forever out of the system to be absorbed on the moon, perhaps. Let's say we would like to have a photon absorbed here at that moment, at that point. And we had an electron that started here and we want it to end here. So the electron goes from this particular place in space and time to this particular place in space and time and the photon is supposed to arrive here. One way it can happen is that the electron goes from this point, which I might call point one, to some other point, which I might call point four, and finally arrives at point two. Whereas the photon goes from four to point three. So it, this would be the typical amplitude. I would draw a picture like this and I'll tell you how to calculate it. Let's suppose I wanted to calculate the amplitude an electron goes one to three, one to two, and the photon appears at three. One way this can happen is one way, only one way is that it goes this particular way, and I'll call that via four. And you'll see what that means in just a minute. It means the electron goes from one to two via going through point four. And the photon appears at three coming out of four. Then the amplitude for this process is the following number, uh, arrow. Arrow. It's the following. I'll write it all down and you see if you can't understand it. The product. Remember how we multiply arrows? We multiply the arrows. These represent arrows. The arrow corresponding to an electron going from one to four, which for some reason, I seem to have written these backwards. No, I know. I discovered from experience that to do it the way physicists write it is unnecessary for beginners. It's only a convention. So let's do it the way it looks come sense. You go from one to four. Then the electron goes from four to two. And the photon goes from four to two. Yeah, four to three. Okay? And there was an interaction. Let's make this nice thing always happen in red. And then we multiply these together. But the rule for multiplication was explained before. They rotate and shrink. So you figure out what each one of these arrows is, then rotate and shrink. So this is nothing but a shrink. It always says when you have an interaction, shrink the amplitude by this factor, 0 0.098, whatever it is. I don't remember the number. Okay? I can remember the square upside down, but I can't remember the square root. So whenever a photon comes out or in, like this, and you draw this, that's where the C appears, the shrinking, each time you emit or absorb a photon. And the motion of electrons going from place to place is always governed by this, and the photon always by that. And by that way, in that way, you can figure out the amplitude for anything. Because a whole world of electrons and photons, at least, is nothing but these three processes combined in various ways. That's all. It's done. Uh, the one point, however, if all I knew was that the electron started here and ended here and the photon ended here, this isn't the right amplitude. Why? And what would you do to do it right? 
Huh? What? Yes, you don't know where four was. This is the hour if it happened to do it there. But it may have been that number four somewhere else. It might have been this point is here, or here, or here, or here. And for each of those points, there's a total amplitude. Those are alternative possibilities. Those amplitudes have to be summed. So we could say, we have to finish this for this particular problem by saying sum on all possible places, locations, and times that I've labeled for. Sum this. Make this arrow for every place and add them all together. The square of this would be the probability, the square of this mess, would be the probability that if an electron were liberated here and were found later here, that you'd find a photon in the detector over there at that moment. All right? That's a special problem, and that's the answer to it, almost. I have to tell, there are more, always more diagrams, more pictures, more ways. Because this electron might have emitted a photon which was later absorbed by the same electron later and all kinds of terrible things, which I now will explain. So let's take another problem. Well, this is a good one, but we'll leave it there, but we'll take other ones to show how it's done. Suppose that I talk about what's called, usually called the scattering of two electrons. One starts at a certain moment from some place and another starts from a moment from another place, and later you find them in two other places. And therefore, we have an electron that may have got from here to here, and the other one may have got from here to here. Now let's calculate the amplitude for that. Let me call these positions one, two, three, four. And I'm going to make a little, a few mistakes. I'm going to rush fast, and you're going to have a few mistakes. We'll come back and fix. First of all, for this problem, and I'm drawing this line to save the other thing for the blackboard. For this problem, the answer is simply E21, E12 times E34, right? Electron went in one to two, electron went in three to four. Okay? Anything else? Any remarks? Finish. No, not quite. Yes, a photon can go. Not from one to four, but you could have a situation like this. This is the first picture. I haven't got room on a blackboard. I just love to keep this one. Well, let me erase this and make the picture smaller. So this first picture is now redrawn. Here's one and two and three and four. Now this is now going to be the basis for the second picture. The second picture has a new possibility. Here. That is that the electron went from one to four or uh, five and emitted a photon. And the other electron went from five to six and picked it up. Yes, and what we're asking for now is the amplitude, a new problem, this part of this section, amplitude of an electron originally at uh, electrons at one and two go to three and four. All right? What's wrong? No, but isn't time going that way? You mean one and three? One and three go to two and four? Yeah. Of course. You're absolutely right. Electron one at one and one at three go, respectively, to two and four. Okay? Now, this was the fir first term. That corresponds to this possibility. But this is also a possibility. And for this possibility, I'll write it down. I'm not going to write anymore because you'll see very quickly what that is. You're, I'm learning the principle. You're not going to actually calculate this. We don't know the formulas. But this would be things like E51. This was times, you remember, in the normal business of time times E25, times E63. How brainy do you have to be to write this down, huh? Four, six, times, ah, wait a minute, now we've got to get a blue one. Yes, you do, yes, you do. Times P56, times more, yes, more. More, yes, more. C times C. Anything else? Oh, yes. Sum. All places. 
for five and for six. Okay? Well, you get the principle now. It's, uh, you have all these things happening. You know, multiply the amplitudes for all the things that are happening. What are those C's? Those are the junctions for each uh, junction, for each interaction. We have a factor C, or an amplitude C, a shrinker. And all of these are the amplitudes for the things to do what they have to do. Now, I have some questions for you. One, what about the possibility this photon simply comes out here instead of going over here and get absorbed? Why don't I add that in? Different event. Different event. Got it. We asked for a special event. We started with electrons at 1 and 3. We ended with electrons at 2 and 4 and nothing else. Something else is a different event. If I were asking for the question, we started with electrons at 1 and 3, and we want to have electrons at 2 and 4 and a photon at 17, that's a different problem, and we start all over again. Okay? That's, you learned that because that was worrying you before. Right. Okay? I mean, I, in our conversations, the half-hour conversations, that was the thing that was bothering me. Are we finished? Is this the complete amplitude for this process? No. There are other possibilities that two photons go across and so on. And they write down very much more elaborate strings of these things. And adding this all together is a kind of a technical job of some complexity. So as the diagrams, and these are diagrams, become, they're called Feynman diagrams actually, as these diagrams become more complicated, they were invented by your speaker, as they become more complicated, they, each one, you see, each diagram represents a term in a sequence of terms. No, actually, they weren't. They uh, get more complicated and there's more calculation needed to compute them. So how can we make any calculations? We got the whole string. We're saved by, in electricity by the fact that this C is small. And the more C's you have, the more shrinkings you do, each by a tenth. 